vamos a empezar con la entrevista a Wendell Strode, el director ejecutivo del National Corvette Museum, para que nos dé el update de lo que está pasando después de ese incidente con el Sing Hall que tragó ocho Corvettes. Well, now we're talking uh, with Mr. Wendell Strode, um, the executive director of the National Corvette Museum. How are you, Mr. Strode? Outstanding. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, you had some uh, pretty bad news a couple of weeks ago about with that sinkhole that uh, took uh, in uh, eight of the of the cars at the museum. Can you please tell us first what you know now from what happened and what caused the sinkhole? Well, this particular area is uh, is actually quite uh, well known for its sinkholes, being part of the Mammoth Cave National Park uh, cave and car system. What is um, different about this one is that it was inside a building and that it took eight Corvettes with it. But uh, we do have that uh, issue uh, as part of this area, but uh, with proper mitigation, uh, we build houses on them, we build manufacturing plants on them, we build interstate highways on them, and uh, it's it's uh, very uh, very something that we you know our construction people know how to how to address um at this particular time the uh, i guess we could say the the, the geologists the folks that are in the know um they think this is very much an isolated situation and they don't have an, an official explanation as to what happened but speculation is if you look at the the structure of the sky dome it's uh, you know big tall round dome building and so there's going to be a lot of water and runoff uh, from that and then also we've had uh, some significant rains in the last three or four years you may remember that we yeah. had the 500 year rain yeah um, probably three or four years ago and um, so we're The water going down was probably taking some soil with it, and the, as we had the big rains, then the water levels would come up, and then as it would go down, it would take soil with it. So it was kind of a kind of a combination, and I guess the conditions were just right for this particular area for this for this sinkhole to develop. We can see, in looking at the pictures that have been taken, you can see a, a cavern, a little cave-like, on each end of that sinkhole. So that kind of that kind of indicates that you know something was uh something was there and and was uh, just waiting for something like this to happen yeah uh i remember a case in florida uh, i think it was last year where uh, the single happened inside a house too and like unfortunately in that case it took uh, one man into it and he unfortunately died so the the immediate question i guess is uh, is the rest of the museum safe i mean what's going on with the museum right now uh Yes, we've had structural engineers and uh, uh, environmental health and safety engineers, civil engineers, uh, structural engineers. We've had uh, several folks in addition to looking at the sky dome and the situation with the, with the uh, sinkhole, but they've also looked at our, our main building, uh, which is a separate building connected by a hallway to the sky dome. But they've they've uh, done some you know preliminary work over here because we wanted that assurance for our employees and our guests. And then we've also agreed that we're going to do, in a couple, three weeks, we're going to do more testing over here. They will be bringing in a micro-gravity uh, piece of equipment. Uh, they they uh, place it every 10 feet, and it goes down uh, about 20 or 25 feet. And, of course, it's looking for, for uh, voids, for caves or anything underneath it. Um, they don't think anything is there, but we want to know for sure, and so we're taking extra measures to, to be sure about that. But we are open, and we might add that we've um, that we've added a plexiglass window back in this hallway that connects the two buildings, so visitors can look in and see the sky dome. They can see the workers working. They can see the sinkhole. Uh, so we uh, we in, invite people to come and visit us, and uh, we're open eight to five every day Central Time. So the sinkhole has become part of the museum now. Right? It looks like. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Absolutely, and and uh, we might just say with regard to that that the uh, uh, the red spire will be kind of the first order of business, and that actually uh, started uh, on. On Thursday, uh, uh, the the um, 
20th of February, and we'll be uh, it will be stabilizing and reinforcing that because about 30 percent of it is undermined. So they'll be working with that, and then they'll be extracting the, the cars, the three cars that are on top. Then they will begin to reinforce the sides of the of the sinkhole, and then begin uh, extracting everything else, all the soil, all of the concrete, uh, anything and everything that's there. And of course, as they do that, then we'll recover or uncover the remaining um, five cars, and of course, we'll extract them as well. Yeah, it's going to be a, a lengthy process, and I, I guess you have to be really careful not only because of. Uh, of, of the cars, but mainly the people working around that and all that. So I guess, uh, do you have any time frame for that process to be complete? Well, the the, uh, the engineers and the construction company, they're saying three to four weeks to have the three cars out and, and uh, also to have made significant progress on the on removing all of the all of the other cars and the removing all of the dirt and concrete and those uh, barriers and everything else that's back down in the sinkhole yeah okay the sink, so the sinkhole the sinkhole you know has been we, we we were saying that it was 25 to 30 feet deep and then uh, the the engineers and the geologists pointed out to us for something to fall 25 or 30 feet it had to be able to fall that so there was there's that much distance underneath it also so they're saying it's probably a 60 foot deep sinkhole when all of that uh, material and everything is is taken out of there, and we're going to look be possibly be looking at something 60 feet deep. Well, yeah. So all the material that fell into it is at the bottom, and that's why it's much deeper than when I guess they can see now, right? So right. Uh, we're talking uh, with executive uh, director of the National Corbett Museum, Mr. Warren Strode. Uh, so, Mr. Strode, uh, something that was uh, uh, come out to to attention of the people is that this museum is not owned by General Motors or Chevrolet. It's a uh, a private entity, right? It's a nonprofit, uh, uh, you know, charitable uh, organization that was started by individual Corvette owners, and of course, was still maintained by uh, those uh, individual Corvette enthusiasts and our members. We have about almost thirty thousand members. Um, we have a very good strategic partnership and and relationship with um, with Chevrolet and and General Motors and the Corvette assembly plant. But again, like you were saying, we are not we are not owned by them. So we do rely on um, uh, on the support of Corvette enthusiasts, uh, people visiting the museum, our membership and the raffles and different things like that yeah. for our revenue to stay open. Yeah, but uh, General Motors has uh, said already that they're gonna help uh, you restore all those cars, right? That's a that's an excellent uh, point. Uh, the, uh, it's been probably three or four days now that we got the wonderful news that Chevrolet uh, Chevrolet has worked out with the GM Design Center in Warren, Michigan, and they're going to restore all eight Corvettes. And uh, so they will be going to the GM Design Center. Ed Wilburn will be uh, as as personally indicated, he'll be overseeing the the restoration. So we're very, very appreciative and very, very thankful for that. Yeah, Ed Walburn is the vice president of General Motors of Global Design. So uh, great input to that to restore us those uh, eight uh, eight cars. Uh, so finally, uh, as you were saying, uh, you're a, a, a nonprofit organization, and I understand you're taking donations to help uh, restore the the cars and like fix the museum too, right? Yes, we sure are. There's uh, the, the the remediation of the museum. I'm excuse me of the sinkhole, and of course the we have a deductible, and then this prevention work and reassurances work. Those things aren't covered by insurance. And we have individuals that are making donations and 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 Corvette clubs, and we greatly appreciate that. And we'll just uh, maybe mention that our website is CorvetteMuseum.org, and if you click on there, you can see webcams, but you can also see a donate button. But we do have a webcam that people can uh, can see the, what's going on in the in the Sky Dome, and they can also make a don donation to the museum, tax deductible donation to the museum. Well, excellent. We're going to also share that uh, information on our own website, so uh, our audience can uh, take a look at that and uh, hopefully help also in the restoration and the fix of the museum. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Wendell Strode, Executive Director of the Co National Corbett Museum. 
And uh, I hope uh, everything goes well and uh, I can soon go and visit again the museum. Thank you so much, Javier. Thank you. Have a great day. Bueno, no se vayan que cuando regresemos aquí en Auto 060 todo lo que está pasando con los pilotos hispanos en la NASCAR desde Daytona. Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Montes.